Okay. Moving to file item 363, Assembly Bill 274. Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 274 by the Committee on Environmental Safety and Toxic Materials and Acclimating to Hazardous Substances. Senator Jackson. Thank you, Madam President and uh, colleagues. AB 274 by the Environmental Safety and Toxic Materials Committee will clarify that the Department of Toxic Substances Control, DTSC, can prioritize its cost recovery efforts by allowing bills accrued during a finite period of time to lapse and write off those costs as uncollectible. DTSC's cost to do due diligence and identify a responsible party for those projects often costs more than the $7,800, resulting in a financial loss to the department to pursue it. These are uh, low value, or low dollar, I should say, high value, but low dollar, uncollected projects valued at less than $5,000. Uh, to authorize DTSC to cut their losses will enable them to more expeditiously cut through the backlog of outstanding costs and free up resources to address larger, higher priority cleanup costs. This measure has no opposition, and I would respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you. Any discussion or debate, please? Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, please call the roll. Allen. Aye. I Anderson. Aye. I Bates. Aye. I Bell. Aye. I Berryhill. Aye. I Block. I Canella. De Leon. I Fuller. I Gaines. I Galgioni. I Glazer. I Hall. I Hancock. I Hernandez. I Hertzberg. I Hill. I Wesso. I Huff. I Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I I Moni, I Morlock, I Morell, I Win, I Nielsen, I Pan, I Pavley, Roth, I Runner, I Stone. I Vidak, I Wykowski, I Walk, Walk I Canella I. Senator Jackson moves the call. File item three sixty four. Assembly Bill two seventy five. Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 275 by the Committee on Environmental Safety and Toxic Materials and Act Relating to Hazardous Substances. Senator Jackson. Thank you, um, Madam President and members. This is the third in a series of bills to address uh, the cleanup of toxic materials by the Department of Toxic Substance Controls. This measure will do two things. First, it revises the state statute of limitations to match the federal statute to give the state more time to recover cleanup costs. And two, it removes a reference to DTSC's general fund to prevent taxpayer dollars from unnecessarily subsidizing toxic waste cleanup. We know that a bedrock principle of environmental law and regulation is that pollution costs should be uh, borne by their creators. Under current state law, there is specific liability for taxpayer dollars to partially fund cleanup due to a provision that requires the, the state's toxics account to pay off any judgment in excess of what a responsible party can afford. That means taxpayer dollars are covering the costs of cleanup where the responsible parties, the polluters, should pay. AB 375 removes the reference to the state account so that the state is not liable for footing the bill when polluters should be paying to clean up the mess that they have made. This bill will provide DTSC with more flexibility to pursue cost recovery cases in state court without putting taxpayer dollars on the line to cover the cleanup made by the polluters. It has no opposition, and I respectfully ask for your I vote. No. Thank you very much. Is there any discussion or debate? Any discussion or debate? 
Seeing none, uh, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Aye. Anderson? Bates? No. Anderson, no. Bates? Aye. Bell? Aye. Berryhill? Block? Aye. Canella? De Leon? Aye. Fuller? No. Gaines? Galgioni? Aye. Glazer? Aye. Hall? Aye. Hancock? I Hernandez, I Hertzberg, I Hill, I Hueso, I Huff, Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, No Morell, No Win. When I Nielsen, no Pan, I Pavley, Roth, I Runner, no Stone, no Vidak, no Wykowski, I Walk, Walk I, Gaines, no. Senator Jackson moves the call. File item 366, Assembly Bill 388. Senator Bates. Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 388 by Assemblymember Chang and Ackling the Housing. See for me. Thank you, Madam uh, President. This bill is a simple but important measure to ensure that funds generated by Proposition 41 are used effectively and in the manner in which the voters approve. The passage of Prop 41 was a conscious decision by California voters to invest an estimated 600 million in housing for low-income residents and veterans. It places mandato mandatory reporting requirements on program sponsors that receive this funding to demonstrate the level of its success of their individual housing programs. By making this information mandatory, the legislature will ensure that veterans are truly benefiting from these programs. Our veterans have given so much of themselves for their country they deserve our utmost respect. I ask for your I vote. Thank you, Senator, ba uh, Senator Bates. Debate or discussion? Is there any debate or discussion on this item? Any debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Anderson? Bates? Anderson, aye. Bates? Aye. Bell? Aye. Berryhill? Aye. Block? Aye. Canella? Aye. De Leon? Aye. Fuller? I Gaines, I Galjoni, I Glazer, I Hall, I Hancock, I Hernandez, I Hertzberg, I Hill, I Hueso, I Huff, I Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, Monning, I Morlock, I Morell, I Wynn. I Nielsen, I Pan, I Pavley, Roth, I Runner, I Stone, I Vidak, I Wykowski, Walk, Walk I. Senator Bates moves a call. Senator Bates, we're going to go back to file item 365. Are you prepared to take up that item? Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 940 by Assembly Member Ridley Thomas and Ackling the Healing Arts. Senator Bates. Thank you, Madam President. AB 940 would expand the career ladder in the California clinical laboratory field. The bill would allow a bioanalyst with a master's degree to serve as an additional laboratory director in a laboratory performing high complexity testing. Furthermore, AB 940 will allow an applicant for a bioanalyst license to obtain the required four years of experience in an out-of-state CLIA-approved laboratory. Without this bill, the growing shortage of licensed clinical laboratory personnel in California will continue. To meet the healthcare demands of California's population, we need to increase the numbers of licensed clinical laboratory personnel. This bill has bipartisan support, received no no votes in the process. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Senator Bates. Debate or discussion? Is there a debate or discussion on this measure? Yeah. Seeing and hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? 
I. Anderson, I. Bates, I. Bell, I. Berryhill, I. Block, I. Canella, I. De Leon, Fuller, I. Gaines, I. Galgioni, I. Glazer, I. Hall, I. Hancock, Hernandez, Hancock, I. Hernandez, I. Hertzberg, I. Hill, I. Wesso, I. Huff, I. Jackson, I. I Lada, <coughs> I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, Monty, I Morlock, I Morell, I Wynn, I Nielsen, Pan, I Pavley, Roth, I Runner, I Stone, I Vidak, I Wachowski, I Wolk. Okay. Senator Bates moves a call. File item 367, Senator Wynn. Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 1129 by Assembly Member Burke, an act relating to emergency medical services. Senator Nguyen. Thank you, Madam President. AB 1129 helps ensure the consistency and quality of data collection across our network of emergency medical services, or EMS providers as they transition to electronic patient records. A key requirement for any electronic patient record in EMS is its compatibility with both state and federal standards. AB 1129 requires EMS data collection system to be compliant, but also ensures flexibility so that providers can choose software and hardware packages that best fit their systems. For smaller EMS providers or those like our air ambulance, providers that serve multiple jurisdiction, allowing for that flexibility strikes the right balance between accurate data collection and provider choice. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Senator Nguyen. Any debate or discussion on this item? Any debate or discussion, seeing and hearing none? Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. Anderson. I. Bates. I. Bell. I. Berryhill. I. Block. I. Canella. I. De Leon. I. Fuller, I. Gaines, I. Galgioni, I. Glazer, I. Hall, I. Hancock, I. Hernandez, I. Hertzberg, I. Hill, I. Hueso, I. Huff, I. Jackson, I. Lada, I. Leno, I. Leva, I. Lou, I. McGuire, I. Mendoza, I. Mitchell, Monning, I. Morlock, I Morell, I Wynn, I Nielsen, I Pan, I Pavley, Roth, I Runner, I Stone, I Vidak, Wykowski, I Wolk, Wolk, Wolk I, Allen I, Vidak I. Senator Wynn moves a call. File item 368, Senator Morlock, are you prepared to take that up? Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 538 by Assemblymember Campos, an act relating to criminal offenders. Senator Morlock. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, today, I, colleagues, I present to you AB 538 by Assemblywoman Nora Campos. Uh, sort of start with a personal story. Uh, I was candidate for county treasurer in 1994 in Orange County and tried to explain that the investment strategy that the incumbent was using was uh, bound for a big, uh, big mistake, and sure enough, six months later, after I lost in June, 60-40, uh, uh, the county's treasurer had to admit that his portfolio was upside down. They liquidated, lost uh, $1.7 billion, just about, and filed for Chapter 9 bankruptcy. And, and so I get to be in a lot of books now, so Google Books allows me to check it out. And, and, there, and the other day, I just did it again, I was in 12 more books, so I'm over 50 books on the topic. It's kind of a kick. Uh, but I, I, I sit and think, what if, what if this was a story that was about someone in my family that was murdered or was the victim of a crime? I, I don't know if I'd really want to see that in books or movies or TV shows. So colleagues, this bill will protect victims from being re-victimized by notifying them when their offender goes into a contractual agreement with a media entity for the sale of their story. Existing law does not effectively protect victims 
and their surviving loved ones from the commercial exploitation of violent crimes for entertainment purposes. Victims and their next of kin should be notified of the potential of their re-victimization. This bill provides the solution. It will maintain the current 10-year statute of limitation for the pursuit of civil action against an offender and will require that the victim or their next of kin be notified when a contractual agreement is made for the sale of the story of the crime committed. This would efficiently and effectively notify victims and their families without harming the criminal or media entity's First Amendment rights. It's supported by Crime Victims United of California, the California Police Chiefs Association, and the California State Sheriff's Association, and I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Senator Morlock. I'm glad we got to the point of the bill, um, and uh, appreciate that, uh, that story. Any debate or discussion on this item? Any debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Aye Bates? Aye. Aye Bell? Aye Berryhill? Aye Block? Aye, Aye Canella? Aye. Aye De Leon? Aye, Aye Fuller? Aye. Aye Gaines? Aye, Aye Galgioni? Aye Glazer? Aye, Aye Hall? Aye, Aye Hancock? I Hernandez, I Hertzberg, I Hill, I Hueso, I Huff, I Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monty, Morlock, I Morell, I Wynn, I Nielsen, I Pan, I Pavley, Roth, I Runner, I Stone, I Vidak, I Wykowski, I Walk. Walk I. Senator Morlock moves a call. We're going to go back, uh, colleagues, to file item 321. Senator Hancock, do you wish to take that up? File item 321. Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 1028 by Assembly Member Bonta and acrolyn to Judicial Officers. Senator Hancock. Thank you, Madam President. Um, AB 1028 permits a former judge or justice who is retired by the Supreme Court for disability to administer oaths and affirmations if certified by the Commission on Judicial Performance. Uh, members, this bill um, is supported by the Association of California Judges and has had bipartisan support. I ask for your I vote. Thank you. Is there any discussion or debate? Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Anderson? Bates? Bell? Aye. Aye. Berryhill? Block? Aye. Aye. Canella? Aye. Aye. De Leon? Yeah. Fuller? Gaines, Fuller I, Gaines, Galjoni, Glazer, I Hall, I Hancock, I Hernandez, I Hertzberg, I Hill, I Hueso, I Huff, Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell. I Monning, I Morlock, I Morell, I Win, No, Nielsen, I Pan, Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, I Stone, I Vidak, I Wykowski, I Wolk, Anderson I, Gaines I, Berryhill I. Huff, I. Please call the absent members on file item 321. Bates, De Leon, I. Galjoni, I. Pan, I. Walk, I. Please call the absent members. Bates.
Senator Hancock moves the call. Colleagues, we are now going to lift the call on all of the measures uh, on third reading that we place on call. We're going to ask all the members to uh, return to their seats in the chambers. We're going to work very hard to do this uh, on one roll call per bill. Help me help you, colleagues. So we're going to ask all members to return to the chambers. I believe we are returning. Okay. I see it. I see it. We're going to start with file item 346. Assembly Bill 85, please call the roll. Allen, Canella, Wynn, I, Pavley. Have the eye. Canela eye. Al and I. Eyes 40, no zero on the urgency. Eyes 40, no zero, the measure passes. Colleagues, just give us a moment, please. <laughs> 